What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again for a Tottenham update. Could be some really interesting topics to talk about today. We're with Brian Tottenham on tour. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing, I'm doing good, mate. This is the video I, I love doing. And the great thing I've done today is I don't know any of these topics that we're doing. So I, it's think, all... I think you do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. You maybe, do. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe I do, uh, but I haven't heard you say them. So uh, there'll be news to me from you. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's get straight into it. And let's start off with Antonio Conte. And there's been a couple of updates today regarding the future of Antonio. And first of all, Fabrizio Romano said straight after the game last night, nothing is decided yet with Conte's future. The expectation around Tottenham and those around Conte is that there are huge chances that he leaves at the end of the season. Sky Sports says there is a growing belief that uh, that belief Conte will leave before the end of the season. Senior members of the Tottenham squad feel that the development of the players have been neglected. Dan Kilpatrick says that Antonio Conte is desperate to leave Tottenham but could last until the end of the season. The Mail are reporting that uh, about Conte saying if he departs, Conte will not be universally missed at Tottenham. Certain members of the staff have felt demotivated and disillusioned under the Italians' management. And finally, Sammy Mockbell says that Tottenham have no immediate plans to sack Antonio Conte, but Chairman Daniel Levy is ready to intervene if he believes the club's Champions League hopes are imploding and the bill for sacking Conte apparently will not exceed £5 million. So that's the state of play where we're at with Conte at the moment. Um, but this kind of stuff about about the the development of the players being neglected, um, being disillusioned under life under Italian management. I mean, we've heard this all before, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, I love that title. Conte desperate to leave Tottenham. It's like in other news, tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's so so blatantly obvious. Um, but you know, there's there's a if he's so desperate to leave Tottenham, you know, there's a quick fix to that. You know, you could always just walk yep. out the door. Yep, taxi for Conte. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's it, when you hear all these things about demotivated and uh, everything. It's it's just not. It's just really not what you want to be hearing. And and and, and the beat says well that Daniel Levy is only willing to act if our top four is serious under threat. What the trophies? That's nothing does, to be. Doesn't matter about doesn't, Champions League, FA Cup, or Carabao Cup. Yep. It's if the top four is it says it all, doesn't it? It yeah. says it all. And that's what we've been saying all along. That's why I said on the fan cam last night. I said. I don't think Levy will act unless um, top four is in doubt. And that's the news that's coming out today. And it makes sense, to be honest, uh, because that's all they want at this football club is the revenue from the top four. And that's the, the goal set on Antonio Conte when he came to the club, achieved it last year, still in the top four right now. Yep. So from their understanding, what, what's the point of sacking him right now? It's just... It's good. Do you know what? I think what I just heard when I was listening onto a Twitter space is, you know what, when they say this... I think every single game we're going into now is if we lose, Conte's gone. If we lose, Conte's gone. If we so lose, Conte's gone. He may as well just gone. go then, if that's exactly. the case. Exactly. But, but, but you look at it, what kind of message does that send to the fans, to the players, to the to everyone associated with Tottenham Hotspur that at the moment we know he wants to go and he's not committing. We know the club may want him out or do want him out. It depends what percentage you're looking at. But we're reviewing this on a game-by-game -game basis. Mm. Yeah, look, it's it's really a difficult situation. I kind of feel like if this is the case, if he really desperately wants to leave and the club aren't um, you know, fully convinced that he's the man for the job, then just let him go. I mean, it's just hurting everyone yep. and uh, letting it fester on like this. But that's the state of play of Conte. There's been a lot of journalists talking about the potential managers that could come in to replace Conte. And Sky Sports have actually given us a short list of managers and uh, they give us Pochettino, Roberto De Zerbi, Luis Enrique, Thomas Tuchel, Marco Silva and Thomas Frank. Um, but we've had other names thrown into the hat as well. Jack Pitbrook says that Paratici is a big fan of Ruben Amorim and Luciano Spalletti, obviously Sporting Lisbon and Napoli manager, whilst the list um, also includes Oliver Glasner um, out in Germany. He also says that former Barcelona and Spain manager Luis Enrique is likely to be at the top of the Spurs' mm -hmm. shortlist to replace Antonio Conte. And this list is being drawn up by Fabio Paratici this month. Uh, he also goes on to say that there has been no approach from Tottenham to Maurizio Pochettino and he is unlikely to be one of Paratici's first choices for the role. Um, Sky Sports say that to uh, several Tottenham players and staff are pleading with Maurizio Pochettino for his return to reinvigorate the club. 
And then finally, Sammy Mockbell says that work on a succession plan for Conte has already begun. Pochettino, Steve <coughs> Cooper, Roberto De Zerbi, Oliver Glasner and Luis Enrique are among the coaches who are options for Tottenham. Daniel Levy is tempted by Maurizio Pochettino, who may help convince Harry Kane to stay at the club. But there is no unanimous support from those within the club to appoint the Argentine. So out of all of that, I mean, what would your thinking be behind? <laughs> so there's so much to, to, to go through there. Um, I like the thought of Enrique, but when I look at it, we like to employ managers with previous Premier League experience. And you look at it, I've just been thinking there, the last one we signed without Premier League experience, I would say, is Martin Yell. Mm. Which is a long, long, and he long kind of time just ago. Fell into the role anyway. Exactly, and the reason. Okay, so Santini as well. So, so, so well, one day Ramos wasn't it? He came afterwards. Oh yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. One day Ramos. Sorry, my bad. One day Ramos. Um, but <laughs> Tim Sherwood. T- Tim Sherwood. <laughs> I, I, I'm classing that he had Premier League experience as a player. Um, <laughs> there isn't a manager on that list that I've been very, very. Uh, um, I've been back in this corner. If we're going to do this and if we're going to go for a, a, a project manager, the name that screams out to me there is Thomas Frank. Mm. Absolutely screams out to me by a mile. But he's, do, he's doing wonders at Brentford. And Brentford, uh, as a football club, are doing wonderful things. For Listen, no one expected them to last a season, let alone second season and then doing so well. It, yeah. the, the chairman and the manager and the fans are all on the same page. I think he's doing a wonderful job. He's brilliant in the media. Look at them, they're on a... I think they're the longest uh, run, for, run yeah. in the Premier League. The, the, you don't do this in the Premier League with a club like Brentford, with no disrespect, unless you're doing something right, you, especially with the big boys about. And they beat Man City at Etihad, didn't they? Um, but I do like Lewis Enrique as well. De Zerbury, um I love what he's doing at Brighton, but he's been here, what, three months, yeah. four months? Yeah. So um, I don't know a lot about the other managers you were saying, the... Uh, the, Lassner, the German one, or um, the, the, Steve, listen, what about Steve Cooper at Forest? So, do you know what? Steve Cooper, I've got someone that spoke to me and said, I was like, do you know what? Steve Cooper actually has done a wonderful job with English youth. Like, a really, really good job. Obviously, he's at Nottingham Forest. He's not the kind, I don't think he's the fit. Wasn't he the under 21 manager at the time? I believe so. He was yeah. at the time, and a, a lot of these players have come through via him. Um, I just don't see him being a fit for us right now. But I could see, apparently, from what I've been hearing about what he does behind the scenes and bringing coaching young players, very, very good. But the one that stands out, if we were to take a punt, and he's doing absolutely incredible this season, is the Napoli manager. Spalletti, yeah. Um, but, but again, but again no do you, Premier League experience. No Premier League experience. But then again, you know like how we say how we we have the Dutch tax and what, we do, what have we done with Italian managers? Do we want to bring <laughs> another Italian manager in who might be... Uh, so, so, out of all that list, like I said, if I had to pick one and I was Paratichino, I was going, it's Thomas Frank. Mm. What about you? For me, it's either Pochettino or Luis Enrique. I think Luis Enrique is a top, top manager. I could even say uh, top five managers in the world, I would say, for Luis Enrique. I rate him really highly. But I think um, someone like Pochettino will come in and get the fans on board straight away. I think he'll give a, a lift to the place, as with Enrique, to be fair. But I think Pochettino, because of how much he's loved by this fan base, I think he straight away... Uh, comes because he's got so much goodwill with the fan base. I think he straight away comes away and re- reinvigorates the fan base. Um, the other managers, now, when I'm talking about like Thomas Frank, De Zerbi, um, Cooper, I think I think there should be a stepping stone uh, in terms of the Tottenham job, and I'd That's like it. to see Thomas Frank maybe maybe take a better role uh, than Brentford. You know, like. Um, like an, I know Everton are like sitting at the bottom of the league, but they're a bigger club than Brentford, if you know what I mean. Yep. So I'd like to see him take a, a team to the Europa League or something like that before he comes to Tottenham. Um, Steve Cooper's a no from me. De Zerbi, like you said, he hasn't been at Brighton long enough. I can't see him leaving there. So I think for me, it's got to be Pochettino or Enrique. And I'm probably, as much as I rate Enrique, I'm probably just siding with Poch just because of how much he will just get the fans on board straight away. The, the one thing that annoys me with this whole story of Pochettino is what well, the words you said that there's that the Spurs players are, are pleading with him to come back. Is that the 12 players that were there that got him the sack? Yeah, you know what I mean. That that's that, 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 that again this this the problem with that being is just the mentality of these players. Like we talk about the fans saying you were singing for him to leave and now you want him back. Well, these players are thrown. I can't see I can't see Rodrigo Bentancourt phone up and saying, "Oh, Poch, please, could you be my next manager?" These are the old players. 
or, or or maybe the old setup and people within the training camp that don't maybe get it's just not happening here at all. Yeah, or, or or that as well. But I this is what I hate if the, if these players are and I would imagine some are saying, boss, is there any chance that if this happens you're coming back? Well, you've gotten fired. So yeah. so what kind of message does that send out? Yeah, I mean I think that sometimes. Uh, you don't miss something as till it's gone, you know what I mean? And maybe that's the case with some of these players in Pochettino because under Pochettino, no matter what you want to say, yeah, fine, maybe some of these players got them sacked, but these uh, they reached those heights under Pochettino. They got to a Champions League final. They were fighting oh, for league titles. They were getting to semifinals of the FA Cup. So um, maybe it's a case of they know what Poch, Poch can do and they want him back because of that. Well, get ready for double training sessions. And uh, exactly. the one thing you can say is if, if he does come back is the fitness levels. Uh, the, we would have gone hammer and tong last night mm. and we would have been able to have the fitness to uh, to at least put on a better display. Uh, that's the one thing that we, we saw like with the games at Swansea, the amount of games we won late. And I think if Poch does come back, uh, for the people saying, I want to see more front foot football, attacking football, um, I think that they'll see um, more flaws in these centre backs than we maybe ha have not seen under. Con I mean, we've seen it under Conte, but we'll see it'll be a much more apparent under Pochettino, won't it? It will be, but also you look at it from the back, but you've also got to look at it from the front, where Kane and Son aren't going to be f uh, pressing it with the urgency uh, and and speed and aggression that they did uh, the first time it was around. There's about they, they've got older, their bodies have adap adapted and changed that they they can't do that. Um, and I think, like you said, with, Kane, with Kane's uh, recent good spell of health without getting injured, um, it's that, that non-pressing has certainly helped it where he, he's adapted his game. So you look at it like, like that from the defence, you've also got to look at it from the front where we're not going to have the, the, the very quick... But we, you may want to press, it's not going to be as tight and as quick as it was. Yeah, um, but maybe that's the case... You know, for the players like Rashalison, Kulusevski, even a Brian Hill coming back, I think Poch can do wonders with a player like even Brian a Dan Hill. Schumer. Even a Dan as well. He won't be here. <laughs> he won't be here. <laughs> he won't be here by the time uh, he comes, uh, if it is in the summer. But look, I think we do have players that can really thrive in a Poch system, and especially in midfield. When you're looking at the likes of like Pape Matasar, Bisuma, Oli Skip, these Alfie kind of Divine. players. Yeah, so I think that there are players, and even when you're looking at the uh, the fullbacks that we've got, po Pedro Porro and Emerson on one side, Adoji and probably need to buy another unless he gives <laughs> Sesame on another go on no, the no, left-hand no, no, no. side. So I think that there are players in the squad that that can really thrive in that system. I really believe that. Yeah, but I think I think the you look at it, you look at Rose and Walker, and that was one of the most integral parts of that, and it does look like with Porro, maybe even maybe even Spence, and uh, and Destiny. He may have that tandem already, so mm. so that that is one positive I see from that. Absolutely, uh, but look, let's move on. Let's talk about Fabio Paratici now. With Dan Kilpatrick said a few days ago that Tottenham um, can expect to learn the result of Paratici's appeal against his 30-month ban from Italian football within the next month. And Sky Sports says that Tottenham have engaged in due diligence on sporting directors, so they are potentially preparing for more than just a managerial change in the um, near future. So what do you make out of that? I mean, we, we have heard that maybe Pochettino maybe wouldn't be so keen on working with Paratici. I can't really see that both of their philosophies really combining. I think they're just completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And if I was Tottenham, if I was Daniel Levy right now, I'm going up to Paul Mitchell on my hands and my knees and begging for forgiveness oh. to bring him back to Pochettino. So, so... First of all, before I forget what I was about to say about Prasci, only at this club could the previous thing we're doing, talking about a list about a director of football, <laughs> is making for the next story to be in 30 days we'll find out if said director <laughs> of football <laughs> is going to be banned from worldwide football and he could be out the door. That's where we are as a football club at the moment. Um, I've said before, with Pochettino coming back, if, if I was Pochettino myself, I would call Levy's bluff and say, right, if you're going to say so you're going to back me and you're going to trust me I want you to either A bring Paul Mitchell back or B issue an apology a public apology to him which you are going to hate doing to prove to me you, that you mean serious if I was Poch um, I would love Paul Mitchell to come back I would absolutely be all for it I, I, I think he was fantastic and, and let's see we've had a long list of directors of football and I think Wholeheartedly, a lot of Spurs fans will say he was the best one we had. 
and not just the best one. We had that worked in tandem with the manager. Um, but getting back to Paratici, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I just, I mean, I, I, I think this band's going to be upheld. Can you really see those Spurs sacking Conte while Paratici is the sporting director at this club? I think Conte's taking it out of his hand. Mm. I think with Conte, what he's saying. I mean, we, we've heard that he's taking the press conference tomorrow. We'll see what uh, pipe bombs he drops and delivers. Um, you imagine he just comes in drunk as a skunk and just starts <laughs> talking absolute nonsense. I'm um, off. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, Arrivederci, see you later, <laughs> ta mic drop, bang, bye. Um, does it seem reasonable or, t- uh, or likely? No, but this is Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. So predict the unpredictable. Yeah, well, we'll have to see how that one plays out. But within the next month, you will um, be hearing the fate of Paratici's court case or his appeal. Uh, But let's talk about Harry Kane up next. And Jacob Steinberg is saying that Man United's summer priority remains a move for Tottenham striker Harry Kane. We were speaking about this last night on the fan show. And I think Kane will be looking to move this summer um, if, if we do burn Conte and if he doesn't sign that contract, which is looking ever so more likely. And, um... Me, personally, I wouldn't begrudge him a move. I mean, it would be so painful to see him in another kit in the Premier League. But at the end of the day, we haven't lived up to his expectations as a football club. And we we blocked his move pretty much to Man City. Well, Man City didn't put enough cash on the table, but we didn't let him move um, two years ago now. Was it? No, it was last summer. No, two summers ago. Yeah. And um, we have not kicked on as a football club since then. I mean, we finished top four that year, which was all right. That's great stuff. But we still haven't kicked on as a football club. And when you're looking at Harry Kane and and what he's thinking, I mean, does he really want to stick around for another rebuild and and for another top four fight? I mean, the guy's one of the best strikers in the world. He could do anything he wants. So why stick around? So you were talking about on the fan show yesterday, or we were. Do you remember, uh, I think it was last week, I did the panel show with you, Simeon and Mm. uh, Jamie from Daily Hotspur. And this question came up and I said United and me and Jamie were going back and forth. And I said, well, last time they were a striker away and they went and bought a 29-year-old Robin Van Persie. What's to stop them doing it? And do you know what? What Jamie was saying, Jamie was saying a, a a load of things, but that's why we were still in a cup and still in a Champions League. I, I think Harry Kane is off this summer. I, I think he is off. Um, but do you think that uh, Man U will stump up the cash that Levy wants? What you've what you got to remember with Manchester United, that, that money is never an issue. Mm. Money, look, they paid £90 million for uh, Anthony, who was untried and untested in this league, still young, still got a lot to go. If Ten Hag gets them to where they are, right, they had the heavy thump in this week. But if they bounce back and finish third or close to set, whatever... And then you got to remember as well, if Harry Kane comes up on the market, whether you're interested in him or not, this mm. player comes up once in what? A blue moon. And is there a team, is Manchester United a team, whether it's the Glazers or not, they'll go, Harry Kane's available, here's the funds, get it done. They, they are. How painful will it be to see Ericsson and Kane linking up in that shirt and um, you know fighting for the Premier League title back in the Champions League? It'll be so painful, won't it? It will be painful, but do you know what? Do you know what the biggest pain will be? Is thinking that we could have done this for him. We could have done this for him. Uh, You've got to remember, Harry Kane isn't someone we paid a fee for and nurtured. And yes, he, we all know he came through the Arsenal Academy, but this, this striker, this world class elite striker, our record goal scorer, fell into our lap yeah. for no expense. Obviously, he's cost a lot in wages and rightfully so, but you've got a diamond a sparkling diamond and it's just like okay build that team around it this guy is a goal machine and listen he, he's at the time now where he's got all the per, the individual accolades he wants the so if he goes to United I'll clap him off I'll say thanks Harry you don't deserve this well done I really don't want you to go but I completely understand it last last time with Man City I was furious with him remember when we went to show, I, was, I was absolutely irate with him but once again He's lived up to his promise every single year and delivered. And he hasn't been rewarded wages-wise, yes, but on the pitch, no. So uh, it will hurt more, especially in a red kit, of all things, a red Mm. kit. Uh, But thankfully, it's not the other red kit. Um, If he goes, good luck to him. Yeah, it's going to be very painful when that day does come. 
Uh, but hopefully it doesn't come and, um, you know, he just wants to stick around at Tottenham and not win anything <laughs> and be a club legend and a one club man, which, you know, a lot a lot has to be said t- to doing that. Yep. Um, but I think the ambitions of Harry Kane is, is much more than that. And he wants to go and win titles. He wants to go win Champions League. He wants to win the biggest honours um, in, um, in this game. And, you know, you can't begrudge someone for having ambition. You just can't. And if the club, which he's given so much time and love and effort to, is not producing for <coughs> you and, and not going in the right direction, then who can begrudge him? Let's be honest. Well, you look at it as well, just very quickly. He's now 59 goals away from Shearer. Mm. I think if he'd been a little bit further down the pecking line, he might have said, you know what, I might not be able to do this. If Bayern Munich, which was one we've heard touted, he may have said, you know what, I'm going with a German title. Yeah. He's 59 goals away. God knows what he ends up with now. He's only going to be turning 30 this year. They like say playing with Christian Eriksen again, being at Manchester United. You look at it, let's just say he gets up to 215 goals for the rest of the season in the Premier League, so he gets another 14 goals. Well, let's even say 210, so he gets another nine goals this season. He's 50 away. Mm. Harry Kane can do that in two seasons. Yeah. All right, uh, let's look at our next transfer target, and this is Alex Scott of Bristol uh, Rovers, uh, Bristol City, sorry. And Ben Jacobs says that Tottenham have been very seriously looking at Alex Scott. The midfielder is expected to leave Bristol City in the summer for a fee around twenty-five million pounds. Um, he was a player that was linked with us last summer. No. Yeah, he's linked with us. Linked with us last Jesus. summer. And um, I haven't seen much of him, but I actually did see him a few weeks ago against Man City in the in the cup. And he looked really good, actually. Really good. Um, so maybe he's a player that we should be looking at. So I don't know, uh, like you, a lot about him. But what I do know is I've heard a lot of people talk about this kid. And not just like uh, fans within the football community. You see it in the papers. There are a lot of clubs looking at this kid. And this one, it's, it's not saying he's going to have the same kind of uh, hit, uh, hit, uh, history that he did with uh, us, but this has got Deli Alley written all over it. I mean, for the youngster, for the youth and a talent coming through, this guy is pulling up trees and people are very interested in him. And like I said, I am all in for doing these kind of transfers, but when you get a few more experienced players in as well, you buy the odd youth product. Like Harvey Elliott at Liverpool, they get a few superstars, bring another youngster in, a few more... And this guy is is being uh, spoken about in very, very, very high places. So Guardiola, uh, after that game, called him an unbelievable player. Well, there you go. I mean, well, if Guardiola's saying that. Yeah, that, that's it. And it's he's been spoken about a lot. But like I said, I haven't seen any of him, but all I have seen or read has been ultra positive. Mm. All right, let's move on to the last story of the t- video, and it's James Madison. As John Percy from The Telegraph says that Madison is likely to be a Tottenham target this summer and would cost a million... Um, a million? <laughs> a million. A minimum of <laughs> £60 million. Pounds. And Paul O'Keefe uh, said this yesterday, saying Conte didn't want him, uh, and he had final say on the player. But Levy was prepared uh, to make a bid for the player, but Conte was the one that vetoed it. So if Conte vetoed it... Obviously, we, we kept hearing he doesn't play with a creative player, but he had Ericsson, whatever. Fine, but that but you can see how badly he a ja- or how well a James Madison. But I don't get that because like last season, toward like in the press conferences and interviews, he was saying we need a creative yep. player. We don't have any creative players. Yep. And if you're offered James Madison by Daniel Levy, why are you not taking that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I tell you what. Right now, if Ryan Isaacs is watching this right now, he's doing cartwheels and he's smiling ear to ear because he's obsessed. With Madison, um, I love this guy as a player. I think he is the real deal. Um, you've seen this season. It, it's basically if he don't play, Leicester don't play. He is he is a wonderful player, and if he is available, but I've seen as well this week alone that apparently this is going to be Liverpool wrapped up because Liverpool will invest in their midfield this summer, um, and apparently he's a big part of it. But also, so is Bellingham. Could you imagine Bellingham and Blooming Madison? There's your midfield sorted. Um, I would love James Madison at Tottenham Hotspur any day of the week. And what I don't get is if Levy said this, like we said, with with, with the bow money, Levy bought players in for AVB and said deal with it and coach them. Um, Why didn't he do it here? Because it means spending money. Well, he did with Jed Spence. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Uh, So, so yeah. And and Richarlison. James Madison coming to Spurs at the end of the season for whoever the manager may be would be an absolute wonderful acquisition. And then 
Well, you would say 60 million, same as Richardson. I think you'll have a lot of Spurs fans acting a bit more differently mm. to spending 60 million on a player if it was James Madison than we saw with Richie. I would snap up at 60 million. Yeah, you know, a few years ago, I wasn't totally convinced by James Madison, uh, but these last few years for Leicester, I mean, they've been pretty much a one man team with him. Yep. I mean, whenever he doesn't play, they hardly score a goal. When he does play, he's involved in every single thing that they do going forward, scores plenty of goals, gets plenty of assists. Uh, can take a free kick or two as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all for bringing in James Madison, that's for sure. But, um, look, that is your Tottenham update. Everyone go subscribe to Tottenham on tour as well, um, where you see this lovely face. <laughs> I don't know uh, if it's lovely. You. I don't know if it's <laughs> lovely. lovely. You'll, see, you'll see my face. <laughs> you'll see my face, that's for sure. I don't know if it's lovely. <laughs> it's, it's most definitely lovely. Uh, but, no, go and subscribe to Tottenham on tour for some more great Tottenham content. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe, and comment. And, as always, come, come on. on.